Hey guys, if you stuck with me for this long, thank you so much. Welcome to part three, the final part of creating your Amplify JS project. And um, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me so much. Helps you too, unknowingly, because it helps me make more videos, which will help you as well. So thank you so much. Let's get started with part three. So our Amplify push has finally finished. We have all this green stuff, no red stuff, no errors, right? Um, if you encounter an error, let me know. I'll help you fix that. And then we get these two little things called GraphQL endpoint and GraphQL API key. Now this is confidential information. Don't let anyone know this stuff, anyone that's not authorized to. Um, you can see mine because I'm just going to go ahead and delete the project. So uh, it doesn't really matter to me but it's confidential with your project, so don't let anyone know, okay? And then um, just do an amplify status real quick right after you're finished pushing. You see that I did I did that a few times here. Just do amplify status, and that allows you to see like the status of your API, pro uh, your amplify project, and you should have API in there with an operation, no change. Um, so, that just means that your local and your cl the cloud with the AWS account is now synced up, so you have those things up. And then if we do um, Amplify Console, it will actually take you to your Amplify Console, which is what I have pulled up here. And then it just shows you all the information about your app. You can see that our uh, Amplify Push was just created here. So Amplify JS app and then Dev. Cool. So we have officially created Amplify uh, with our cloud, and then it's also in our local project too. So what can we do with this? What, what have we done here now that we have our API in Amplify? Well, let's go back here, and then let's just check out some stuff we can do. So let's, let's, let's follow the uh, tutorial here, and then we'll connect our front end to the API. So I'm going to explain what all this code does. But first, let's just copy and paste it into our app. So what we want to do, where we want to copy and paste this, is into our um, source app.js. So let's navigate there. So let's cd into our source. And then we're just going to open up uh, app.js, right? Oh, whoops app.js right so that is in our visual studio code we have nothing in our app.js file right now because we haven't done anything but we're going to go ahead and paste that code in here so we're going to be good so let's go back to our app.js i'm going to save it with Control s and then i'm just going to walk you through exactly like what what this thing is doing right so what we're doing here is line by line, right? Just a general overview. We're importing the Amplify uh, framework. Oops. We're importing the Amplify framework so that we have access to those commands that we execute down here. And then we're importing Amplify configure, which just, you know, it just does some configuration stuff in the back end uh, so that we can use Amplify. And then we're importing the create to do command from our GraphQL, the create to do like function that executes in our GraphQL. So now that we import create to do, we can now create to do's, um, which is remember from our GraphQL schema, we can now create those from our project that syncs into the back end now, as long as we import this create to do. And this comes from our GraphQL slash mutations. So that's just the importing part, right? Now we have Amplify configure, which just configures the project. Okay. So we have that done, and this is just, you know, typical JavaScript. Now we're doing an asynchronous function, and that just means that um, asynchronous just means that it's just going to do it uh, one at a time, and it's not going to do like multiple things at the same time. If it does it, you know, in one line, then uh, you can get information and then wait for it. And then once the information comes back, then you continue with the function because if, if you start the next part of the function before the information comes back, uh, your application will run to some errors sometimes. So that's not going to be really good. So we can see here where we have an asynchronous function. Whenever we call, whenever we call create new to do, we're going to create a constant called to do, and then we're going to create that to do. And you can see here this relates to our schema that we create uh, our template schema that we have when we were creating the API right here. 
you can see there's a type to do model here. So let's see if it follows it. Yep, it has the name, it has the name, and it has the description, which are both strings right there, right? So the name of this to do is to use app sync, and the description is real time and offline. And then we have a little um, dynamic thing here, which is just date and two local strings. So it's just a date in a local string, basically, right? And then one thing we don't have in here is ID because if we don't include the ID field, actually when we, uh, th since it's type ID, w when we create this and then we sync it to our backend, it actually just generates an ID for us. So we don't have to do that. If you want a specific way to define your, um, to define your objects that you create, then you can go ahead and, you know, type in ID, oops, you can type in ID and, you know, create something. And that's like a very specific ID. And you can use this to kind of query for uh, the stuff that you create. So um, yeah, you could do that. Or you could just, if you don't really care and you just want it to be unique, then you can just exclude that as well. So we're gonna create that constant and then we're gonna come down here and then we're gonna return or in our asynchronous function here. We're gonna return um, waiting for, so first we're, we're going to come in here and then we're going to do a GraphQL query, which is going to be uh, operation, not query, sorry. And we're going to create to do, which we imported from here, right? And that's just a function that is just going to take in something called a to do and make, and it makes sure that this structure is, you know, it follows to do. The create to do um, operation here makes sure that this, whatever it inputs, is, follows this to do model, right? So all we're going to do is we're going to input to do right there, and then we're going to create it with our GraphQL operation right here. And then that just returns uh, our creating to do. But the most important part is this operation part. And await just waits for it to finish before we, you know, do something else like console.log, like finished or something. Oh, that wouldn't work because we return it, but you know what I mean, right? So that's just our function, right? So we have that, and then we have our constant mutation button. We're just defining some stuff here. Document dot get element by ID mutation event button. If we go to our index.html file, which is right here, remember we created that earlier. Get our index.html file. We can go and look for our ID, which is mutation event button, right here, and we can relate that to this get element by ID, which is mutation event button and then we just store that into the constant right there so we can use it in this function in this uh yeah it's event listener just like that uh we're looking at our mutation button dot and we're adding an event listener whenever we click something we want this stuff to happen and what is this stuff to happen we're calling this function which is create new to do so we want to start this function up whenever we click on the mutation button which is this button this uh whoops this button right here whenever we click on the add data button it's going to go ahead and call this which is it's going to start a new to do so actually it's going to create this new to do with the name use app sync and it's going to throw it into that operation and then afterwards once that event is finished we want to go ahead and change mutation result which is found right here we go back to our index.html file we're going to go to our div mutation result and then what we want to do with that is we're gonna add to the inner HTML. So, you know, if we're basically doing the same thing as like adding stuff to this uh, inner HTML. And what we're gonna add is we're gonna add a paragraph and then we're gonna have that dynamic variable, the event.data.create to do. So since we returned that to do that we just created, we're gonna get that data, we're gonna get the to do we just created and we're gonna get the name of that to do, which was app sync, use app sync if we remember correctly. And then we're gonna put a dash in there and then we're gonna do one more dynamic data thing and that's create to do and we're gonna list out the description. So that's basically our entire application right now. I just took you through every single step that the program's kind of thinking. So make sure you save our app.js and save our index.html to make sure everything's good. And then let's actually just try it out, right? So let's uh, close this out. And then we want to go to our Amplify console. So let's pull up our DynamoDB table to prove that this stuff works. So I'm gonna open up our, our uh, DynamoDB table here in that button. 
And then you can see we have our to-do table right here. And we're going to go to items. And then we can see that there's nothing in our to-do list right now. But let's change that. Let's go to our um, console right here. And we are going to npm start. And so that should start up our um, server in our local locally. You can see it compiled successfully. We, we go to local host and go to port 8080. And then we have exactly our HTML thing that I just described. And you can see that button that we described. It said add data, right? So uh, we have our add data button right there. Once we click this, it should theoretically uh, go through that function we just explained and then throw in some stuff into our DynamoDB table. So let's go ahead and click it. And you can see we also have that, remember that uh, dynamic data we just did? And we have the time, we have that little dash that we just said. And then if we go back here, theoretically, it should be here if we refresh it. And you can see we have now created a to-do in our DynamoDB table from our little application here that we have. So I just proved to you that um, you can create this application with Amplify and you can kind of communicate it with your DynamoDB table right here. And even though I just proved it, you just did it as well. So actually you just created an Amplify application successfully. Great job guys, you've done it. You, you know, you just have to add some more stuff into your modules, your, your schema, and then you have a full throttle uh, application at the tip of your fingers. Great job guys. And then one more thing I just wanna add, uh, what, now that you have, understand the concept and how it works a little bit, we have all of these resources available to us. All we did was we added GraphQL API and then we just kind of tried something out there. But actually you can add authentication, you can add data store, which is, you know, it's basically the same thing as API, but it just allows you to do it offline, offline data as well. Interactions, predictions, push notification storage. We have all this stuff that is available to us brought to you by Amplify, AWS, and the great Amplify team that has coded this up for you. So that is it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you guys really learned something so that you can actually create applications that are really helpful. And um, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's gonna be really cool to see what you guys make out there, right? So um, if you guys, one more thing I just wanted to add if you guys want to push your um, application that you created here into an actual like website, then what you want to do is you want to add hosting, which is going to be, it's going to be right in our tutorial. Wait a minute. Let me go back here. Let's go to the documentation. Okay. Let's return the landing page. Get started. Okay. Tutorial right here. So what you want to do is you want to add hosting, right? Remember we did Amplify Add API. We're going to do Amplify Add Hosting, and then you want to do manual deployment, and then that actually deploys your application to the World Wide Web, which you can thus sh uh, share your entire application on the internet instead of just locally, right? So we added our data here, but it was all local, and um, you know people can't access your local host port 8080. They have to access it on the internet. So to do that, you just add hosting, right? I keep losing it. You just add hosting uh, here. You just add that, and then manual deployment, and then just go look at your console, and it'll show you all the information there on how to do that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Share this video. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.